From virtual church services online to virtual egg hunts, it's an Easter that's forced people to make changes and adapt. But right now we're keeping separation. We're getting rid of the plague. It's a plague on our country. The president is speaking on Easter Sunday. He's looking ahead to when he might reopen the country's economy. We've got one more morning of some chilly temperatures, but then milder weather returns this week. The IRS says starting this week, they'll start distributing stimulus checks. Do you qualify? Text the word money to 509-448-2000. Good evening and thank you for joining us on this Easter Sunday. I'm Tim Pham. Well, many of your normal Easter routines probably looked a little different this year because of the coronavirus. Traditions might not have been the same, but new methods were used. Krem 2's Brandon Jones explains what virtual Easter looked like for many of us. Easter and church go hand in hand, and from the very moment I woke up, I had access to church services all across the world, and the thing is, I never even had to leave my apartment. With stay home orders still in place, sunrise service was a bit different this year. Churches had to find a way to get their word out, whether that was through Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, or whatever streaming service of their choice, options were available everywhere you looked. I even got a chance to attend my home church service back in Florida all over the world. And that's the thing. Locally, there was a ton of options to choose from as well, so you could bounce back and forth. For example, Krim 2's very own weekend anchor, Tim Pham, was telling me about the Life Center of Spokane. I haven't had the chance to attend any of their services in person, but today was easier than ever to experience what they were offering. I spoke with some local religious leaders who believe this is one of the positives that has come from this pandemic. It's also been neat to connect with folks from uh, different parts of the country. You know, when you can't do what you do, what you normally do, do what you can. So while gatherings in person still aren't allowed, technology has made it possible for new doors to be open and for Easter to be celebrated virtually. Reporting from my apartment, Brandon Jones, Crim2 News. Brandon, thank you. Well, other methods of service were on display in Spokane Valley this morning. East Point Church off of Sprague Avenue held a special Easter drive through service with members parked outside of the church. You can see hundreds of cars lined up in the parking lot outside of the building. Now, the church says the service was granted approval because churchgoers were in alignment with social distancing guidelines and didn't exit their vehicles. A sheriff deputy was also on site to assist with traffic. Well, Pope Francis and Catholics around the world celebrated in solitary on this Easter Sunday. Sunday. Like pastors around the world, Francis celebrated Easter Mass with no audience, while the faithful looked on from the safety of their TVs at home. Washington Governor Jay Inslee took to Twitter to wish people a happy Easter across the state. He said he remains hopeful and is encouraged with how people are caring for each other. Well, today, President Trump shared a message of positivity with Americans on Twitter. He wrote, a lot of us are at home instead of in churches, but we still have so much to be thankful for. But right now we're keeping separation. We're getting rid of the plague. It's a plague on our country like nobody's ever seen. But we're winning the battle, we're winning the war. We'll be back together in churches right next to each other. Celebrate, bring the family together like no other. We have a lot to be thankful for. Happy Easter, everybody. Well, following the Easter holiday, the president is eyeing a decision on when he might reopen the country's economy. Well, we started the day with some chilly temperatures and it looks like we'll see more of the same tomorrow morning. Meteorologist Michelle Boss is live from her living room to let us know just how cold it will get tonight. Michelle. Yeah, we already saw temperatures dip down in the 20s this morning. It was definitely a chilly Easter morning and it looks like we could be maybe even a little bit colder tomorrow morning as we take a look at satellite and radar right now. No precipitation across the inland northwest and any clouds that we saw earlier this afternoon have dissipated. So we have clear skies across eastern, eastern Washington and north Idaho. The winds, uh, we saw some gusty winds yesterday. Those have certainly lightened up today and we're looking at uh, wind speeds generally under 10 miles an hour. So the combination of clear skies and light winds means we are going to see some 
pretty cold weather tonight and tomorrow morning. In fact, Deer Park has already dropped into the lower 20s. They will likely see lows in the teens tomorrow morning. Upper 20s right now in Sandpoint and Coeur d'Alene, holding just above freezing right now in the Spokane area. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Clear skies overnight, though it's not showing up here the hours between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. We will likely be in the middle and upper 20s. Full sunshine expected tomorrow, though. We should come out a little bit warmer than we were today. High of 53 degrees. That's still a little bit below average. We should make it up into the 60s on Tuesday. Those skies will be mostly cloudy. Slight chance of showers on Wednesday with a high of 58, but the rest of the week looks mild and dry, Tim. Well, let's get you up to speed with the newest coronavirus numbers in our region. Spokane Regional Health District is reporting a total of 274 confirmed cases in Spokane County. 14 people have died out of the 49 people who were hospitalized during the pandemic. 20 are still in the hospital. Statewide, the Washington Department of Health confirms that Washington State now has 10,411 cases. 508 people have died statewide. Across state lines, the Idaho Health and Welfare Department confirms there are 27 deaths and just over 1,400 cases in Idaho. In North Idaho, Kootenai County reports 44 cases, while Bonner County has confirmed four cases. Well, looking ahead, if you qualified for a stimulus check, it should be on its way. Here's what you need to know about when you could see money in your bank account. Congress has passed an historic $2 trillion stimulus bill meant to invigorate the economy during the coronavirus pandemic. It's the biggest relief package in history. Much of the bill is geared towards helping hospitals, states, the unemployed, and business owners. But what does it mean for regular people who are still working and don't own businesses? Even if neither applies, there's still relief coming. How much you are going to get is based on your tax returns from 2019 or 2018 if you haven't filed yet this year. If you make less than $75,000, you'll receive a check or direct deposit of $1,200 plus an additional $500 for each child. The value of those checks will start to decline starting at $75,000 for individuals and $150,000 for married couples. Individuals who earn more than $99,000 or married couples earning more than $198,000 will not get a payment. Those receiving Social Security benefits will also be eligible. But don't expect this money to arrive tomorrow. It could be weeks before the payments hit your accounts, or even months if you haven't set up a direct deposit with the IRS. It's estimated that about 80% of tax filers will be eligible to receive full or partial payments. And good news for people who are struggling to pay off their student loans. The bill will also suspend federal student loan payments for six months till the end of September. Hopefully, these measures will ease the financial pain caused by the pandemic, and the government may take additional action as the situation develops. So for everything you need to know about the stimulus checks, you can actually text the word money to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you a link with more information. And speaking of the IRS, Wednesday is April 15th, but it's not tax day this year. A reminder that the deadline to file and pay taxes was, push, was pushed back to July 15th due to all of the coronavirus disruptions. The new day includes an extension on the filing deadline and federal tax payments. Meanwhile, over in Blaine County, Idaho, the Board of Commissioners announced Saturday that the county will be extending its self-isolation order by one week. It will now remain in effect through Sunday, April 19th. Governor Brad Little's initial order was implemented on March 25th. The latest move is a continuation of a previous restriction in Blaine County that deemed construction activities and landscaping work as non-essential. While a lot of businesses have been struggling financially during the coronavirus pandemic, however, that's not the case for one small barbecue restaurant in Spokane Valley. After being open for just a week, Smoke Ridge Barbecue is selling out of food days in advance. We sold a lot more than we ever uh, thought we could. It cost us a lot of catch up work, you know, which has been great to do, but uh, it's been it's just been an overwhelming support from the community. It's just terrific. Well, like many other restaurants, they are still open for takeout orders. You can't miss them either as they're selling barbecue out of the big train in Spokane Valley. Well, there's still much more ahead on Krem 2 News at 11. Governor Inslee signed legislation to protect tenants from being evicted, but that hasn't stopped landlords from trying to cash in. 
And temperatures will approach record lows in some parts of the inland northwest Monday morning. Coming up at 1117, Michelle Boss will tell us just how cold it will get. Plus, she has your seven day forecast. But before we go to break, a look at how some of you are celebrating this Easter Sunday. Check this one out from Jamie. She spent the day celebrating her son's first Easter. From all of us here at Creme 2, happy Easter.